Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Hope you are okay on that side of the screen. And today to take a quick look at the new Sabrent Thunderbolt 3 to 10 gigabit network. I almost didn't need to do a video about it because we already covered at least in two videos one with a 10 gigabit switch and one with a 10 gigabit NASH unit network attached storage solution sorry about my pronunciation regarding the NASH but it's the best I can do now results great but we will talk about that in just a few moments in terms of build quality it is as usual Sabrent is one of the top brands in terms of storage in terms and I've done a lot I will leave some links right over here or right over here uh, I've done quite a few and so far I haven't found anything that was not well built so if you are looking for premium then Sabrent is one of the brands that we can get anything that it's not cheap looking sometimes you have great prices which was the case of one of the enclosures that we've seen right over here the best enclosure i've seen so far at one of the best prices so i'll try to leave the link right over there and that's for storage enclosure for storage now today we are talking about network and this is just awesome this is a block a really really well built aluminium block that will uh, act as two things first of all it has a great uh, build quality and it also acts as a dissipator so it will dissipate the heat and as you can see on the edges as these pins right over here on both sides uh, which is just great by the way it has a thunderbolt 3 on one end so we can connect in my particular case a macbook pro mac mini or the macbook air with the m1 cpu which are the machines that i've got available to me and then on the other side the 10 gigabit rj45 connection for the network and the camera that it is okay so and then it comes with a uh, adapter and of course the thunderbolt 3 cable not the adapter a protection rubber protection so if we drop it um, it will protect from an accidental drop and it will not damage the aluminium and so on and so forth it also has by the way this rubber protection as on the sides where we have um, those fins as some holes uh, to let the air in which is well Thought. now in terms of speed what I can share with you guys is that the there are at least four factors that we need to have in mind first of all we have an adapter then we have a 10 gigabit switch then we have a 10 gigabit NASH and inside the NASH we've got SSDs and we've got hard drives so there are four factors to have in mind on all the tests that I've done so far and I will keep on doing them with different machines so if you want to follow this topic just uh, subscribe to the channel and from time to time you will see the Sabrent in action with different machines now my conclusion right over here is that so far I haven't been able to reach the 10 gigabit maximum speed in most of the tests but there is one test that I actually got it now the first one that i did was iperf it's a standard to test out network but on iperf i've got mixed results right over there it shows me lower results than what i actually can do in real life and when i mean real life is that i got a maximum of 730 megabytes per second on transfer speeds but let's go for it so ah see, here it is 730 this is the maximum that i've got so far using uh, the mac mini with windows and unfortunately on windows i did not record well the screen but we could reach 600 and something and then the maximum 730 so iperf is giving me results lower than this and this is not something that is fair to any of each of these four uh, things right over here because iperf only measures the network and i was able to transfer real actual files at a much superior speed than what iperf 
tells me. Then there is another fact that I did test out. The switch has a software and that software can measure the bandwidth. And when I do test out one gigabit speed, the switch tells me that the speed is at one gigabit. So it's correct. Now, when I test out a 10 gigabit connection, the switch tells me that I do have, in fact, 10 gigabit connection speed. So, which one is right? Because at this moment, I've got to give credit to these four factors. First of all, let's do a test of one gigabit machine. I've got my Mac Mini right over here with iPerf installed. So let's do a test so that we can check something here on the switch menu. So we are getting a one gigabit uh, connectivity and what it shows is 900 and something, 1000 uh, megabits, 600 and something. So it just lowered and now zero on the connection. So I just want to establish a pattern here to help me and help you guys to understand some of the values that we will have later on. So this is a gigabit connectivity, no surprises right over here, something that we have for quite some time. Let's take a look at the 2.5 gigabit connection. So let's just run the iperf command right over here. And as you can see, we will have the results of a 2.5 gigabit connection. So 2300 and something megabits per second, which is the result. And if we repeat the test once again, so that we can see it better, it starts ramping up and then it goes to 2300 and something, which is more or less the same that we see right over here. So it reaches a maximum of 2441. Um, and basically this is normal for a 2.5 connectivity. Now let's go for the 10 gigabit, which I'm going to disconnect and connect. So I will be back in just a few moments. Okay, so we are connected to 10 gigabit on the computer and 10 gigabit on the Kinap NAS with a 10 gigabit connectivity. Now let's do another test and just the normal commands and let's go for it. So as we can see, the speed right over here will jump to 4 point something, 8,390 and uh, that was the maximum of this speed. But one of the things that I'm really curious is that on iPerf we are not getting that results. Now maximum that I'm getting is about 6 point something, 6 point 30 something. Also I have to trust the software which tells me that 1 gigabit is, cor is correct, 2.5 gigabit is correct. Why not the 10? It's showing me that it's 10. So this was something that I wanted to establish with you guys. Let's do a test that takes a little bit longer so that it takes uh, time to uh, talk to each other. Now it has reached 10,000 megabits per second right over here. So 10 gigabit connectivity, 8,900 and we are floating 6,900. We are floating on these values and the test is almost over going down. And as we can see, including the disks on the NAS, because I do believe that 730 megabytes per second was great, but we have the limitation of the SSDs and the hard drives. And it's not only the network. So here we are with these mixed results. And once again, if you want to follow up this, just follow the channel. And from time to time, you will see uh, network attached storage solutions that I will be testing out. Actually, I do have a Ezra store, which has dual 2.5 gigs. And I will also be testing besides this one, also the new Sabrent 2.5 gigabit um, adapter, which hopefully will be in the middle ground. So if you only need 2.5, you can have a cheaper solution, which is great. If you need 10 gigabit, then what I can say in terms of feedback, it's really, really happy. No drivers, nothing, just plugging one cable to the computer, and that is it. By the way, I'm using the Mac, uh, mini MacBook Air and MacBook Pro, but you can also use on Windows and Linux. And guys, that is it. Hope that this video was helpful in some way, and if it was, don't forget the usual thumbs up right over there. My name is Huerto George, and as always, I'll see you guys on the next one.